Yo, what is up with it, Golden Gamers? We have a very special episode coming to you guys today. Toph, the magnanimous and powerful host that he is, holding it down. I'm so glad he's joining us today. And I'm also thrilled and ecstatic to have the man, the myth, and the legend himself hear from that Miracle Genesis run, J. Mook himself, in our presence. What's up, man? How you doing today? Good. It's great to be here. I mean... I got the shirt. I got the yes. shirt. Yeah. Oh, let's shirt, go, dude. You know, let's got the go, merch. Dude. You know. You know. I've been. You know. Haven't gone. Uh. Or what was that a week ago already? You know. Still. Still haven't slept. Or. Still wearing it. You know. Haven't showered. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you mm-hmm. stay up mm-hmm. at night. We, you think we, about we it. We ride off the. The high. You know, the wave. Yeah, but man. Yeah, thanks for having me. I mean, not great. It's my first like first time getting this kind of interview, this kind of you know content. So I'm pretty excited. And you know what? I bet wow. it won't be your last. That's right. That'll be my last. <laughs> um, yeah, I did. I was. We were just talking before the the, the program. And by the way, uh, to everyone out there, yeah, I'm on a, I'm on a laptop. I'm traveling. I'm in a hotel. It's six a.m. in Singapore. It's crazy. I'm trying not to talk too loud to wake oh, up. Singapore. Wow. Yeah. 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 I'm. Uh, I'm actually visiting here for because my, my my family's out here. It's my my grandma's ninetieth. So. Oh wow. Couldn't couldn't say no to that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but here I am. The power of uh, Discord bringing us all together, of mm-hmm. course. And uh, dude, Jamo, yeah, you know, I, I. So my understanding is you've, you've, you've played for. You're not like I think. I think for probably a lot of people, you're a pretty fresh face. But at the same time, you've definitely been playing for like a couple of years now. Yes, the least. biggest mis- misconception is that I'm a slippy kid. When actually, when I'm actually a doc kid, like started around mm-hmm. like 2013, 2014, did the whole like watch the doc, and then. Pick up PM, then and then nice. finally Ooh. arrive at melee. You know, would you play in PM? Anyone, anyone that was um, let's see, it was like it started with like Falcon, like Marth had a Lucas for for some reason. Like this, is like back in the day, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I'm a I'm a doc kid. Not nah, not nah, uh-huh. kid, though. I I don't take any offense to that because you know I might as well be a slippy kid, you know, <laughs> based on recognition. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Well, that's part yeah. of the process, man, is uh, when you when you get more known, you're just there are just misconceptions that are going to be out there and fielding those is just going to be part of the process. So, yeah, that, yeah. that can be a, that can be a thing. You're just you're just going to come on an interview and people will be like, well, where'd you come from? And you'll be like, I've been here. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Is it true uh, that you beat Cody at Cody's first tournament? I did. And that was, let's wow. see, fall <laughs> of. 2015 it was a bi-weekly in syracuse new york and this was at the time this was cody's um so cody was a net player prior to that he didn't really get to, to like travel to many locals and this was uh a random like syracuse bi-weekly it was like hours away from where he uh, went to school which is at rat um but yeah it was like fall of 2015 and i show up play him at his first tournament it was like you know i think i it was like 2-0, 3-0, or something like that. It was his, it was fir- his first tournament. He was brand new. Um, I will say it is amazing to see how he's seen... I've seen him come up, he's seen me come up, and now it's like, you know... It's crazy that it's, it actually, like, started there, you know? Mm-hmm. That I was, like, there for that. What is it, was it also your... It was both of your first tournaments? It was his first tournament. I had gone to tournaments okay. for, like... I had, I had about, like, a year extra of, like, experience um, like, at, at tournaments prior to that. Um, I guess I'll just ask kind of the classic real quick before I get into some, some other things that I really want to ask. Um, what uh-huh. made you switch from PM to Melee? Well, PM was kind of like my, my best bet because at the time, like I've, I've, I grew up playing Melee 64 Brawl. Brawl came out on my birthday, which is really hype. I remember that day. Mm. Um, so I, I always grew up playing Brawl, but after I saw the doc, I was like, okay, I really want to learn like you know, I want the mechanics to this. Like, this is like this is really new. Like, this 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 game that I've been playing my whole life suddenly just has like a whole new layer to it, and it's like I want I want that like right now. But my disc, my melee disc, was scratched the hell up. Like, it, mm. it, you know, it was it had all all you know, and you know you know about those like those fake like disc cleaners where it's like yeah, like, just like put it in and it'll oh, yeah. kind of like yeah. yeah, they they never work. They never work. It'll get um, scratches out or something. It's like yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll take the scratches out. It'll it'll cure your dog. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. do your taxes. Yeah, it'll do your taxes too. Yeah, yeah um, but yeah, I my melee just broke. So my next best bet was you know figure out how to you know, get Project M, how to mm. not download that. So that was like kind of my intro to that. And I played it on a, 
my first like glimpse at like melee as mechanical game was like PM on a flat screen TV because I um did have a CRT at the time where ours was like broken. So yeah, that was kind of that. And then like once I was like, okay, I'm just gonna learn how to, you know, what you know, download Nintendo, and do do the whole homebrew thing, mm. you know, and get melee that way. Awesome. Well, hey, we're, I think we're all pretty glad you made the jump, man. <laughs> yeah, thank you. There is a there is a world where PM is the is is just it for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I so, yeah. But... and even for a lot of people, I mean, it was definitely yeah. like. I mean, I remember what it was like back then, like twenty fourteen, yeah. you know, like early twenty fifteen. Like, um, what, I think it might have been like Paragon or something. Paragon was actually like it had more. It might have had more entrance in PM than Melee. It was like the yeah. one that uh, Forest one that came Mr. L's back then. PM was popping, and um, yeah, it was definitely popping off. So back when that, PM um, was like the side event, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was it was cool. It's cool to see all the people that kind of like sort of came from, um, either came from PM or just spent a good time, a good amount of time in that community. People like Magi, people like Aklo. Yeah, uh, Junebug, Junebug too. Junebug for sure. Yeah, yeah. Junebug for sure. Because he was like winning stuff, or or at least coming really close. Um, but but yeah, that's uh that's 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 dope to see. And I feel like uh the reason I asked what your your PM main was because I feel like it in in some ways it kind of says a lot about your kind of play style, obviously, and like your personality because it's like kind of just a different character set than than melee. Yeah. Um. Yes. Yeah, so that that's pretty dope. And speaking of your play style, I. Dude, okay, so my theory, um, something I noticed at Genesis, right? And I know, PP, you weren't there, but I'm sure you probably heard this. But, like, mm -hmm. dude, people were ch – this is kind of sacrilegious to say. This is kind of, like, heresy. Um, PP, this is going to sound like heresy to you because you've been around. People were cheering for Jamu uh, when he was playing on the big stage. Yeah. Like, it was it was like Mango was playing. Yeah. Um, it, it, it was crazy. I've never heard anything like it. Yeah. 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 Do you think that's just because, like, largely because of your play style? Like, I feel like, for me, okay, the first time I saw you play at an offline major, where I was like, oh, that was crazy, was, I think it was you versus, it was some Fox at SWT. Was it, like, Shoppe or one of those? Or? Might have, might have been Cam, uh, the Philly Fox. Yeah, it was Cam. It was Cam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you did that one sequence on FD. Uh, and I was just like, I was like watching, I was like, I was like losing my mind. I was like, what the, uh, cause I have a secondary sheet and I think she mm -hmm. is a cool character. Right. Um, and I was just losing, I was losing my marble. Uh, do, do you think that's most of it? Like, cause I, I, I have to imagine a lot of these people, like, you know, Brandon was saying like, dude, they're cheering for Jamie. Like he's from San Jose. Yeah. <laughs> obviously see, you're not. So yeah, it, it felt like. I don't know because I feel like there's a lot there's a lot of reasons to it. One, obviously, I'm uh -huh. an underdog. No one, true, true, like, true. No one on a global level like knew about me the same way that they knew about the rest of the players in the top eight. Hell, even like the top like sixteen or you know top thirty two. So it, I think it was a combination of that and maybe my my play style. But see, like I I still don't know because like I don't know. Like I remember like going on the stage and like I hear the crowd like it started like rising. I was like I was like wait, what, like, what, did something happen? And I, I sat down, and I'm like, oh, wait, no, they're actually just, like, really you hyped to see, to see me, <laughs> you know? Like, to see me against right. none. And that was a really eye-opening experience. And obviously, like, that was, like, I n I've never gotten to play, like, with a crowd like that in my life. Like, Smash Bowl Tour, mm -hmm. yes, there was a crowd, but it was more, like, people were there to yeah. kind of play, and there wasn't, like, it wasn't, like, like the Super Bowl of Smash, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So it was very, like... It was hard to not only learn how to play against top players, but learn how to play with the crowd behind me, which I feel like I did really well overall at Genesis. Yeah. Because it got to a point where, like, it felt like, like, whatever, like, it felt like I was just there, like, I was just playing good melee, and there just happened to be a crowd behind me. Like, those two things were completely external. Mm -hmm. and I'm really proud of myself for doing that, especially for my first time, like, yeah, under pressure. Yeah, the first like time that. is really hard, too, yeah. so that's, that's very yeah. impressive. Uh yeah. Uh, yeah, that that's that's how it's got to be. I have to imagine that's really hard for a lot of people, right? Like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I mean, PP, what was that like for you? Do you feel like you got oh, to that state? Dude, the the first time, I mean, Mango talked about it. Everyone, he talked about how everyone played awful at Evo 2013 because there was that huge crowd. We've yeah. never been on that stage before. The melee was pitiful. Yeah. Hmm. We all we all were choking everything. Um, but Mango's someone that can thrive on that a lot better. And so, and there are so I've. 
I've seen or heard from so many people the first time they get on the big stage, they just fall apart. And then after yeah. that, it gets better. The, but the first time, almost everyone I've ever seen falls apart. For you to not do that is is very unusual and, and very impressive. A mm -hmm. testament, I imagine, to your, your mental fortitude and, and maybe other things. I guess so. I mean, to be honest with you, like going up on stage for the first time against none, yeah. like... You, yeah. you, say that to, you say that to anyone, it's like, oh, like, I'm going to get cooked. Like, like there's <laughs> yeah, no yeah, way yeah. that I'm not just going to get absolutely obliterated by none who, like, I've beaten before, but not in a, like, in setting person like setting that. like that. Yeah. 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 I mean, absolutely, yeah, that... absolutely impressive run. And uh, right, I'm going to ask my question, but right before I do, before I forget, uh, if you're in my chat or toast chat, exclamation radio mm -hmm. melee, click the link, join the discord, ask some questions. We got a lot of people already in there, so you're going to have to hurry and get in if you want your question picked. But please That's right. roll through. All right. Now, J Mook, I think the question everyone really wants to ask and I, <laughs> I really want to ask is, how did the run happen? And, and I don't want you to answer by just saying, because I, I watched some of your other interview. I, I I want to know how did you practice? How did you think about the competition coming forward? Um, what were was there any sort of specific training you did leading up to this? And I know you you performed fine at World Tour, but and and so that was indicative of growth. And so, but there was I mean, there's a massive jump from 13th to second still, right? So yeah. So if there was any extra training, I'd love to. Hear, I want to hear all about that. And I think people are very curious, you know, what you did, how you did it, and and what you just approach to competing is. Well, I think you'll be disappointed to find that it's not as as grindy as it looks like. You know, uh -huh. people. I think I think people would place me in the in this like in this box of this very like this tech chasing chic who's very like very fast, very technical, and like and he's just gotta practice that for hours and hours on end, and at least like just to hone that craft. And the answer is, I kind of don't. <laughs> like I've I don't think I've practiced tech chasing like in the past like year and oh year and a my half so. gosh there's um, some people out there that are probably upset to hear that <laughs> they're probably upset and they're probably like yeah you're you're probably like full of shit on I, I mean i don't know <laughs> yeah maybe that <laughs> you, too. you know and maybe maybe i am maybe i just like maybe i see you like playing somebody as practice as yeah. like tech chasing so because mm. it's like if you're if you're tech chasing you know if i if i play cody a lot and i'm tech chasing him like like do i really need to do the do against cpus all the time and, like, up, obviously yeah. yes and no but um, yeah, it's more, it's less grindy and more so like arriving at a certain state once I once I plug in my controller because prior to none, um, it felt like I mean obviously I was surprising myself the whole way through during that Genesis run, um, just like one one set after another, you know, starting with with Plup with Lod and then none yeah. and Co then IBDW, yeah. um, it felt like I was just doing one like just just overcoming one mental batter, battle after another. Because mm -hmm. I went to this tournament thinking I was gonna get like place top sixty four, get knocked out early, and just kind of hang out with my friends and you know Drink hopefully get top player. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing. I, I was actually like the the only thing I missed out on on Genesis was was getting knocked out Saturday and and doing the whole top <laughs> eight thing. Like yeah. I've always wanted to do that, but at the same time, my my melee dream has been to play in that venue, that top yeah. eight venue. Cause I'm big yeah. into like, I'm big into sound. I'm a, I, I love music. I, I, I've done open mics with guitar, with cello, oh, with wow. piano. I, I love, like, oh, wow. you know, I love, I love performing like that. So just like oh. to hear your, your character in a, in a venue like that. in this, like in this church of acoustic sound is, is, is amazing. And I felt like that kind of powered, powered me up too. Church um, of acoustic just, sound. Yeah, I don't know if the, I don't know if that's a good if that's the right. No, case. I mean that's powerful. No, that makes, no, no, I'm not making fun of you. That's powerful. Yeah. I mean, like my friends yeah. were saying, like, yeah, Genesis, the venue, like you, like Fox shines, and you just like you feel it in your chest, just like a bass yeah. player, you know, on stage, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, so like, it was that aspect, and it was also like, I don't know, I did a lot of meditation prior to the nonset because it felt like overall, like, you know, I I tweeted about this, saying that like I've I learned the the difference between wanting something and needing something. Um, mm. It felt like I needed to beat none. I needed to beat none, and I needed to beat Cody. But I wanted to beat Zane, and I wanted to show off against Zane, which okay. felt like a kind of shortcut because it was like, well, I want to show off against Zane because he's number one, and if I lose against Zane, he's he's number one. What am I gonna do? So there's there's kind of like that, you know, the kind of like ex excuse you have for yourself. It was like, well, there's no one else that's you know as high as him right now currently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. let me ask for a follow-up on the needing versus wanting i mean 
why why did you feel the need and and what sort of because you you were also talking about a mental battle so I'm not sure if this ties in for all your sets mm. why it still seems like it was a mental battle so I'm curious about what that means but also why did you feel you needed to beat these people was there something you felt that you really wanted to prove did you feel that you were capable of beating them and this was your chance you know what were you what were you really thinking what was the need there I think it was the need to be desperate or it was it was a need to be desperate enough so that um nothing else matters or that it's all or nothing like it, it felt almost like like 10,000 years from now it's not going to matter whether i i beat or lost to none you know in the grand scheme of things it really it's not going to is the outcome the outcome of everything is not going to you know it's not going to influence things as as much as as we make it out to be even though it's just such it's this this pivotal moment in melee and we just you know came back you know to our first like super major so like I, I felt like it was like I was denying myself the the right to feel, to be nervous because I'll be honest with you I wasn't that nervous on stage as I thought it would. Um, but I think overall it was like I needed to just I needed to just play melee and then that's like what I came there for. And like I said, like the external the the crowd was like completely like separated with the CRT. Um, you know, and I I feel like I'm overall getting in a sense of what it means to to play under pressure like that to truly play under pressure and not have anything like kind of seep in to not interact with it. Mm. It almost sounds like um, you learn maybe the most with, with Zane then where you're going to have so many more of those mental lessons uh, going forward. Do you have any immediate takeaways from that? Cause that was so different. Yeah, it's definitely, um, I think my, e my ego definitely got in the way of that, of my sets with Zane a little bit. And that was like, that was my first like, realization that i can't just like i can't just like it, it was the first time where i was like okay i'm gonna play for the crowd and show them like hey i could like i know i'm not beating him but like i i could do this at some point you know kind of thing um but yeah it was it was also it was also humbling too because zane's amazing and yeah i truly that was my first set against his marth i played his fox previously but um yeah i, I got a like a glimpse of like what it's like to to play someone who pushes you so and punishes you yeah. for like things that I never thought like anyone would punish me for it, you know? Yeah. Um, he, he punished me for being nervous, for being, for being aggressive, for wanting to show off, you know, for wanting to like, you know, tr for trying to do some like underdog stuff uh. and be like, Oh, here's something that you've never seen before. So I'm going to try and go for that. And then it just didn't work, you know? Yeah. yeah. He PB did. <sighs> I feel like I even talked to Zane about, it and he was like last i think last week on radio mail he even kind of noticed like he even pointed that out right he was like i really didn't want to let him get anything going because i remember one of the moments was like in that second set when you did the upbeat of the ledge on dreamland and he would like oh yeah i forget exactly how it happened but he, he, he like he, stole, he, like, the ledge. The ledge he stole the ledge there yeah. and then he's zane's remember i remember zane saying it was very important i got that because I could tell, I mean, he was saying J-Mook, very momentum-based player. I mean, we mm -hmm. talk about right. that in the community sometimes. And he said, yeah, I just didn't want to let him get anything going. So he 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 certainly did not underestimate you. And he went in saying, I mm -hmm. have to stop him at every point. Because if yeah. I don't, this guy is going to do to me what he's done to so many people to, mm -hmm. today or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Because even the first set, it, it felt like once you got a little bit going, um, you were able to kind of take that momentum and ride with it. And, and, and do you? feel that way about yourself because like i know there's kind of always been this characterization in melee of like certain players are very momentum driven yeah. um you know like like certain people it feels like once you i mean i don't know if people necessarily agree with this for themselves but i mean we used to say certain players like a lot of falcon players like for example rode the energy the and things like that right mm -hmm. um or, or yeah or just play really well with momentum do you feel that way about yourself like was was this kind of a new thing for you at genesis obviously this was such a different experience uh yeah but have you felt this way about yourself in the past or not not even really so much i've never like identified myself as momentum based because i i still have yet to learn what that means you know yeah right, that, right it's weird to say about yourself so it's like you know the typical like always very methodical player and it's just like well like so as everyone who can play this game like sophisticated mm -hmm. you know you know, it's um. Mm -hmm. So I I don't I I try to avoid like saying like momentum based, but I do think like I do thrive off of like like small moments of victory, and I think mm -hmm. that kind of pushes me forward. Like if I can get like you know so many like sets of like 
I like there there's like moments or like I mean I was down against Gatsu and Keizu like oh two at, at Smash World Tour and I just reverse three oh them. Mm. It was my like and I remember like one or like literally like one moment from each of those sets was like, oh wait, I, I'm gonna win this. Because of just, mm-hmm. just just from like one small victory. And I think it's so I wouldn't say I'm momentum based. I think that I I try and go for things that like kind of like hype me up. I don't go for like like maybe like most of that th- those that stuff is like stupid or that you shouldn't go for in tournament. You know, it's the risk of dying. But I feel like I'm really good at like okay, well I hit this. I realize that I can hit this against even like you know one of the best players in the world, and then I can just just ride that momentum. You know. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Um. And I imagine we're going to have more people asking about this and and calling in about it. So well, I know we need to go and get to them. But thank you so much for talking about the run. I think everyone was very curious about it. The run. And we might get some more questions about the run. Yeah, I imagine yeah. so. But before we get to everyone's great questions, let's go ahead That's and do right. community voice from uh, last week. And that was when we talked about how uh, what w- what would the world be like if. Uh, if Don't Test Me had defeated Hungry Bucks, because he had gotten close, but he had not done it. And we asked people to try really hard. So uh, people ended up writing their novels for it. And we. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> getting some here of the we short go. Ones, We still need yeah. to know. After the groundbreaking H Box loss to Roy, Juan was devastated. He streamed Ultimate every day, but you could see the pain and sorrow in his eyes. He wanted to win so badly, but the mighty Roy was too much. H Box contacts Tove. 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 Okay, I'm in this. So we match names Roy. On the King of the Cube, Zane locks in Roy, and then it shows Hbox is picking Ness. The great counterpick war has begun. This is something Zane Hbox would do, by the way. Yeah, this is actually not that unrealistic. Uh, who would win? Please, Zane. Zane would win with the up. What? Up? Up B, I guess, maybe? Up B. Up smash? Maybe just, up. Maybe just jumps, you know, I don't know. Up tilt. <laughs> it's not a very good move. On game nine to win the undercard match. In defeat, Hbox hung up his melee cape and come, came home to ultimate with 250 gifted subs at the end. Wow. Oh, that's a low ball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a low ball. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's par for the course. You, uh, you can read the next one. Yeah, I got it. So James was saying, Hungry Bucks becomes a mustache guy, but he, he censored it uh, and develops a fear of all sword characters. The stash. He sets her mustache. <laughs> and then he's got, we got some more asterisks here. I think this yeah. is mental dialogue. The stash absorbs my panic sweats and deprives my opponent of valuable information about my mental. He muses. Meanwhile, Zane wow. develops a link secondary. Well, this is the most oh, unre- this is the most unlikely outcome. I'll tell you that Zane hates oh, link. Zane hates link. Zane hates link for no but, reason. <laughs> but maybe maybe this is a di- just super different timeline. Don't quest me. Yeah, it must link. be. To push that Hungry Box sword matchup even further. Throwing a bomb at Jigglypuff becomes known as the Zane. Never mind. I love this timeline. Yeah. And the Armada versus Link, Armada Young Link versus H Box story fades into obscurity except when people compare Armada to Zane, i.e., the old wow. Zane. Zane. Yeah, this is good. This is a good timeline. These are imaginative. Yeah, I like this. Uh, I like yeah, the Yeah, the second one. I like the Link. I, I don't understand why he censored the word mustache and then <laughs> yeah. immediately when he wrote it the second time didn't censor oh, it. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, that's, you know, that's something. That's really something. The first story, uh, the first one I could see actually happening, you remember when, do you remember when Hbox actually tried Ness against yeah. freaking Armada's it's, young like on Yoshi's crest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, why is and this the kind of thing? Get like the kill, all... but the fly guy saved him. The fly mm-hmm. guy di saved him. Oh god, yeah, that's right. That's right. Personally, it's the first so... one is more likely to happen, but yeah, but don't the quest me. Don't, don't quest me. Don't quest me. Strong. Like that has to like at least, at least be tried out. Like just maybe once. Also, doubles as a good Runescape username. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. You gotta have 100%. the option coverage. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think that's it for the community voice for this week. And uh, so without further ado, we're ready to get some of our wonderful callers on the air to talk to us. Uh, and I think our first caller is joining us right now. That's right. It's legendary Super Smash Brothers Melee map creator uh, <laughs> who I met at Genesis. What is up, Etos? Welcome back to the program. Etos. What's up? I'm also E-toss. president of the JMOOC fan club. I made the 22 shirts e- at Genesis. Oh, he did, you did make the shirts. We have questions mm. for you, actually. But you asked my, my question. I need to ask you about um, uh, merchandise uh, production. But why don't you start? You do your question hey. first. All right. Uh, That's less J-Mook. important. 
I know your tweet after Genesis said that, quote, I don't expect to continuously repeat a run like this. In fact, I will most likely bomb. How did you come into this mm. mentality when so many Smashers seemingly have, like, such bad mentalities? Is this a mentality you, like, always had? Or, like, even when having good performance in the past, or what? I feel like I've... I've had this thought literally every time I've surprised myself with a run, even 13th at Smash World Tour. It feels like, well, I did this, but like, like that, like, I'm not, I'm not that same person anymore. Like, you know, we'll see, let's see next time. Like, that was, I was just, I was just in a funk that day. And for some reason, like, everything just pieced together. Um, and I'm even saying that now about second place at Genesis because it's like, it's, it's extremely hard to live up, live up to an expe- expectation like that, especially for someone unknown like, like me. Sure. That's fair, but I mean, you've shown you are capable of it. I mean, those two results are still relatively strong. I mean, even if you don't top eight next time somehow, which I'm not suggesting you do, but if it mm-hmm. somehow happens, then, you know, it seems like you're going to be fine, but it'll still be reasonable. Like you get 13th again or you yeah. get 5th or something. I think, you know, you've shown you're capable of it. And I, you know, I mean, I I just hope that you end up, you know, really being able to fully enjoy this instead of saying, well, you know, maybe I don't know if I could do it again. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm sure as I would love to do, to be able to do that again. And can, I think the, I think the narrative now is like, can I hang, you know, can I, yeah. can I, can I keep up with it? You know? Yeah, and even if I question. don't, like, I, don't, I really don't want to be like too down on myself for it. Like, I'm still like, I can, yeah. I can still do that. There's still a, a method for me to tap into that state, you know, it's yeah. just like, it's a matter of like, how am I going to get there and how, how long am I stay there for? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very well said. Um, I mean, you've talked so much about getting into that state. Is there, I mean, I'm again, I'm very curious about how you did all this because especially with that big stage for the first time you've mentioned meditation. Is there a routine you do? I know there are a lot of athletes that'll have a routine or they'll, like tennis players will like do something with their racket or they'll tie mm-hmm. their shoe or they'll do something with their shorts before every serve or something. Yeah. Is there any sort of routine you have? It doesn't have to be like that. It could be something larger, but is there a routine you have to really, really lock yourself in, uh, to, to, uh, that, that state that you had? Um, I use headspace, the, me- you know, headspace, the med- oh, it's a meditation yeah. app. Um, it's helped me a ton over the years. Um, I mean, I could probably do like solo meditation at this point. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's incredibly helpful because once I like, once I once I come off of like 15 to 20 minutes of meditation and I come out, um, the key thing for me is to like, I kind of like numb my body if that in a weird way. Like, like, is that with the meditation? Like, what's that? It, it, during the meditation, you numb your body or is that separate? It's like, it's like afterwards. So it's like okay. the first is like to prep my mind and to like mm-hmm. make sure my mind is like still or that like. I ha- or not like still that there's like I'm just trying to like clear clutter, but just like building a good relationship my with my thoughts instead of just trying to yeah. just trying to remove them because yeah. I think I think the latter is uh more you know it's unhealthy. Um, it's more so coming into it and like when I mean numbing my body and face, I literally just mean like just like making sure that like I like it helps with the mask too, obviously, but like mm-hmm. just like numbing my face and body so that like like these parts of my of like this part of my body is just like. I don't need to move it. It's like, it essentially just might as well just be turned off. You know, I'm trying to like literally just like flick off switches. Like, so you're just, like going there in your mind like, and you're the saying fat, this can be quiet, the fat, you know, starting with the mind and then, and then the oh. body. So once I get there, you know, that's why I'm so keen on like having good postures. So that's like, once I'm, once I like, so, like start and let's start crazy. and start the set, it's like, I don't really have to move except for my hands, you know? Wow. Dude, I was just, uh, thinking um, on, I actually think I might have even mentioned at one point on commentary. I was like, dude, James got a really good posture. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, yeah, it is important. You, you it play is play better dude. too. You play better. It's you literally, do play it's, better. Literally, it's literally your stance. It's your, it's your, you know, it's it's yeah. your posture. Like how you're willing to take on the world. Like, do you want to take it on like hunched over? Or do you want to expose yourself, chest open, and that's right. You know, that's right. The failure. You know. That's right. I'm leading in right now because I need to talk into this laptop mic. But yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, um, everyone just started. Everyone at home just started like <laughs> straightening up after. Yeah, that. yeah. They were at, while they have headspace downloading. They're all straightening up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that is that is uh, that is really sick. And like I, uh, and this has been uh, like, did you do? You know, did you apply to this? Like, for example, Smash World Tour. Like, this wasn't doesn't sound like it. I guess I guess Genesis was obviously new because it was on 
a bigger stage, but um, yeah. Overall, the habits, while. the habits, like I've I've been doing this for about like five, you know, five years or so, five mm-hmm. or six years. You know, it started like, oh, nice. 2016. Um, it's more so like keeping it consistent and make sure that like obviously like as as you build habits, some some get stale, some don't actually work anymore. You have to like adjust things. You know, um, circumstances happen. Obviously, for a tournament like this, it's probably it's really hard to to zone into that to actually you know you know put yourself first before the overall overarching yeah. like narrative of the tournament you know and so i mean this sounds pretty healthy before i ask uh kind of just reiterate the question we were asked is there any other habit you have that really helps you lock in or, or is that the that the main stuff you do uh it's those two things also water um mm. water chewing gum mm. just little things like that yeah oh, chewing gum. Is, yeah, I like I like uh, chewing gum like when I'm while I'm playing. I've been chewing I've been chewing the same uh, the same piece of gum or the same like type of gum since I was like type of gum. In, in like eighth grade. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like it's like my my like lucky my lucky gum. You know. Can, can I ask which gum? It is. Just, you know. No, don't don't don't, don't say. Like. If you say, then they, they don't. It's they not don't get, lucky anymore. It's a free plug. No, it's a free plug. You got to let them pay for that. Um. Uh, I see. I see. Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. Smasher soap combined with Orbit's bubble mint. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's there right. you go. Well, hey. I mean, I. You know. I mean, the the headspace plug you did earlier. I think a lot of people yeah. are going to be rushing to that. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, it might be worth reaching out to them or something because that'd be cool. That'd be a cool partnership. Use code JMOOC or something for ten percent off yeah. premium. But anyway, um, so you've got this. You've got this. You know, nice preparation procedure. So with that. I'm going to reiterate the question back to you, Jmook, just to see if your answer is any different. If you, why do you think? Why would you tweet that you can't have a repeat run like that if you've got such a good preparation routine and you've you've had two pretty good last tournaments? I think it's more so my ego, like just putting that out there and being like, I want to, I want to, I want to like think this way so that i can surprise myself next time and be like oh that's cool and then mm. just go on to the next one i think it's like i don't think it's truly i don't truly think it's like oh yeah that well that's never going to happen again because i think it will it just like it's the probability and i feel like the probability like i mean who knows like i said that like you know going to genesis i'm like i'm gonna get like 97th or something like i put like who do i think i am i'm playing against you're These like players, you're like oh. the you're like the the student that studies for hundreds of hours and then goes in the test is oh I'm gonna bomb and you like get a hundred and five yeah. you're one of those <laughs> well, I hate, well first of all, I hate those people first of all <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> well that's people infuriate me and I well, yeah. I, I do feel like p- people feel that way about me my, me when I'm like, <laughs> like that. so maybe oh, I yeah see. so maybe I I should cut that out you know at least <laughs> this is not meant to be a call out just a little bit I don't know <laughs> a little bit oh dear but it it, it it's i think it's all about expectations right like i think um that's something people struggle with like uh you know like even cody after was talking about it a lot after i guess it was summit 12 where he won and then it's like hard to go i think in anything it's really hard to go not even just competition but in 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 literally you know uh a lot, a lot of different areas of life. Um, I think it's really hard for people to go backwards at all. Like, it's really hard for people to accept even, um, like, the whole image of, like, you know, local maximums, right? Like, you can be on top of a hill and, and you know, you don't realize that there's a taller hill that you're eventually going to climb. You're going to reach new heights, but sometimes you have to, or to just down, the way life works is you go down, yeah. Yeah, don't go people down have a really must, hard time. To go up, you first must go do- go down first. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like that. I think people, it's, it's very, uh, you know, I think people are usually short sighted, and you know, we there's this really very human instinct, I think, to define yourself by your last tournament performance, mm-hmm. right? I think that's something every Smasher relates to. Is like you have a good tournament, you're on top of the world. You have a bad tournament, you're like, oh god, oh my, god, I'm so terrible. Like I need to get, I need to go to another tournament immediately and almost wash that taste out of my mouth, right? Um, yeah. And so uh, I think taking that long view is really healthy, obviously, for that reason. It's just like you have to almost, I think, manage the expectations, not for other people, but for yourself. Um, and I think it's cool that you're being so proactive about it. I think that's a really good thing. Yeah, because I definitely intend on being here or playing Melee for a little bit. Um, yeah. I haven't made the tweet, tweet yet, but uh, uh, I'm about to quit my job. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. No way. I, I put them two weeks in as, at oh, Starbucks. Full time? Full time. Yeah. Well, I'm hey, graduating in May. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. I'm just wow. going to full send this. Yeah. That's um, beautiful, yeah. man. Dude, that's sick. Yeah. So, Thank okay. You. That's really, yeah, that is awesome well, guys, to hear. Uh, well, you're going to be streaming and stuff, right? Yeah, streaming. I mean, this hey, is my... Plug, I, plug the stream. Plug yeah. the stream now. Do it now before it's all right, too late. Twi- all right, 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 right twitch.tv right, twitch. slash uh, jmook11. That's, mm. that's jmook11. Yeah. Nice. Okay, that's sick. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. Please yeah. follow and sub to this man. Yeah, yeah. Follow first. Jmook11. Subs will come after once I build a good stream schedule. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah. I think people just you, want to support you right now, man. That's true. Yeah, it's it's tough because like I I feel like it's mostly a lot of it feels undeserved because it's just like it's just from this like one this one tournament and now like people want to you know they want yeah. more of me and like I guess that makes sense you know but personally I don't feel like I've I've never I've never felt like I've been like as like charismatic or that like that person that's like oh i want to like i want to like listen to him i want i want to watch him mm. or it's like i've i i'm entertained by him you know for, for me it's like i've always struggled with like you know performing especially like you know with my voice or just overall personality so i don't know yeah. so hopefully i i get to learn that aspect of of streaming rather than just like sitting there playing looking at twitch chat and be like hey thanks for the follow and then just keep on <laughs> you know? no i you feel know? that but i will also say i mean you know you played for years and years without you know getting too many dollars for it so i'd say you put in the years you have the expertise um and you've inspired a lot of people so i think you know for that reason alone they're gonna at least start but yeah you yeah i mean the the skills and everything can can come afterward in terms of being an entertainer but you know i mean if you if you (laughs) learn entertainment like you learn melee i don't think you're gonna have a problem man yeah i mean we'll see i'm just i'm just i'm I'm excited to like start off on a queen i wish it's a clean slate, but for now, I'm I'm just excited to, um, just learn it like while also pursuing melee, you know, with no other yeah. distractions in the way. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah. It's an exciting time. It is. Um, but Very yeah, cool. it, it, in the meantime, uh, I think we've knocked out this question. Uh, I do want to make mm-hmm. sure our other callers get to talk to you know the wonderful and powerful J Mook. So thank you so much, Etos, for calling in. Do you have any uh, shout outs for us on your way out today? Yeah, uh, shout out to everyone that. All the 22 people that got JMook shirts, including Shirts, who's in chat, who literally lost his voice, and I could not, like, he could uh. mouth things at me at the after party. Like, he could not talk. Uh, uh. There. Church is really funny, um, nice. and I've definitely, I've, I've died. he's the sort of person to lose his voice pretty frequently. There's a great so picture of him awesome. screaming in the crowd by one of the photographers, where he's oh, just, like, screaming over everyone. It's great. Wonderful. I gotta see that. Hey, thank you so much for calling in, Etos. It sparked some really good discussion, and hope you have a good rest of your day, gamer. Thank you. You too. All right. Let's go ahead and bring in our next caller. We got plenty of people trying to talk to this man. Horsey Chobunzo. I don't think I nailed that name, but I'm probably at least kind of close. What's up, and where are you calling in from? Hey, you got it close. Uh, What's up? I'm I'm calling in from San Antonio, Texas. Oh, nice. San 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 Antonio. Very nice. What's your question for us today? Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. My question is, uh, I've been watching a bunch of Street Fighter V recently because the, uh, the like final balance patch, quote-unquote, came out. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. And it got me thinking about how, for most like traditional fighting game characters, uh, or at least recent ones, uh, you know, you have characters that have moves that are designed for some kind of express purpose, for the most part. Uh-huh. Um, so, you know, everything is supposed to do something, and it usually succeeds, and then if it doesn't, then that character's pretty bad. Um, but then, in contrast, you go to Melee, right? And you have a lot of characters that just kind of have moves that are there. Uh, like, you know, things that come to mind are, like, Cheek Chain, or, like, Ganon Up Tilt, you know, things like that. They, If they had an express purpose, they have since been lost, and, you know, they, you know they're just kind of dead moves now. At least in, four till or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. At least for for what we're doing with the game, right? Yeah. Um. So, but however, there have been some some trendsetters recently. Like in particular, Amsa. This past couple of weeks, been watching a lot of that guy. Um, he's been utilizing neutral B in really cool and interesting ways, mm. as like a cool yeah. aerial command grab. Or mm. you know, in the past few years, you've been seeing a lot of Marth players go for like uncharged neutral B off stage for like gimping when you know it's named shield breaker like you know crazy stuff like that mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. 
so I guess the question is, you know, one of two things of what is one of y'all's favorite application of what used to be a dead move, like in recent years, or what is a move that you think has really interesting potential that doesn't get used very often at all? Um, I can start, actually. Yeah, Yeah, I I think I'll start. I I like using uh, multiple hits of Marth side B because that doesn't come out too much. Um, Mm. That, but it's fun. There, are, it, it's it's a move again. If, if the first hit, you'll see it versus floaty sometimes to set up for up yeah. tilt. Mm-hmm. Uh, but multiple hits, falcon uh, and neutral, right? Right. Um, but there's mul- the multi hits. You can use that versus falco and neutral. If you get the first mm-hmm. hit, you can do like a chain starting around twenty percent or so and get pretty much all the hits. You can do it against falcon. Um, I actually, when I played lot on stream, I think a couple weeks ago, I got. Um, two or three hits of the whole side B against him too. And I was able to convert one into a kill. It was really surprising. So oh, wow. we found something for that. It was really cool. So I think, uh, I think, you know, just being able to see, you know, Marth change into pretty colors and then give people lots of damage and then they die is inherently kind of funny and kind of neat. Uh-huh. So that's going to be my answer. Um, but I'm sure there are lots of other good ones. I think another fun one, just to throw it out really quickly. Uh, this is, this is going to be a lot harder to use, but I think the weak hit of Marth up smash is kind of interesting. Mm. Um, oh, higher yeah. percents can set up a tech chase. It can just oh, have someone stall in the air near you. It's fun. It sets up a tech chase, but let's be real. It's a mistech every time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> you, tech time, you can just forward smash and it'll hit. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So throw out yeah. something else that it's might good, have the niche use, but it's a it's another one to just throw out. Didn't mean to pick two Marth ones, but those are just what came to mind. Like you got any J Mo? Uh, yeah, I like the I like the Marth side B one. It's the closest one yeah. to it's the closest one that makes like like you almost have to guess if you're playing ult like you have to check to make sure if you're playing ultimate or not because it feels yeah. like when you, when you three yeah. you're just like oh yeah. like like what am I playing like Steve or something like, what is this, like, <laughs> multi- it's, like it just links up you know yeah in brawl you spam that tool as Marth so it was very yeah. weird going from Marth and brawl to melee because you'd overdo it in melee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you got you got any comes to your mind? Yeah, I was I was gonna say I think it's dope that um so first of all I think it's dope that uh. Uh, Amsa is being brought up here, yeah. Because um, yeah, I do think for Amsa, uh, I've realized playing him a lot lately um, that he's really using the neutral B and the side B to great effect. He's actually uses uh, oh he he revives every side Yoshi B recently. Move. He uses every Yoshi move. He uses upper down forward tilt, forward forward tilt, down on forward tilt. Like he literally uses every down tilt, up tilt. Um, yeah, side B is used as a recovery because what you do is you when you're recovering high, get down to the ledge. And then if you don't dive into the ledge, a lot of the time what you actually can do if they're if they're um like expecting you to drift in, uh, is you can also side B, which really like you know you know when Luigi's coming down and he like Luigi uses down B to like kind of mess with his momentum, he like stalls near for a second, then he kind of falls at a weird speed. Like you know, she kinda of does that with the egg, and it's actually really, really annoying to try to cover. Uh you can see him use it pound. Um so I think Ops is a really great example. I love your example, PP, of the of the doubles, the side B thing. That always reminds me of um dude, I remember it was it Shine? I think where Zane beat H Box and I remember he the second kept trying to pop him up. The second hit, because he kept trying to pop up with the first hit, but then H Box was CCing, and it was like, well, okay, that's a pretty good answer to that. I guess CC beats it. And he was just like does uh, the was, second hit. Wasn't Armada the one that up. told him about that? Oh maybe, yeah. I would I think I remember us I would not even be surprised. Conversation. I think we talked about it. Why did Armada know that? Really. Yeah, I this, I think he just probably lab stuff to get rid of H box. That's so funny. I think funny. we talked about that. I forgot. He I thought about a Marth counterpick for a little while or something. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um. You know, it's funny. Uh. That. Um. Okay. I actually do have an answer. Uh. Of a move I I want to see used more. Um. Of course, he chubbed so, and it's a move you actually already mentioned, which is Sheik's chain. Um. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if you saw. It was Konotori, the Japanese. Well, he used to be a Japanese Falco player, hmm. aka Ko, but he plays a lot of characters and he was using Sheik at. I'm going to just Google it right now because I don't want to say the wrong tournament, but it was against SFAT. Um, and what he was basically doing with it, he did this several times in the set, uh, 
Yeah, S Red versus Konatori Sheik melee pools Evo 2018. It was actually such a bummer for Ko because it was game three last stock, and I think he was even up two stocks to one at some point, but he like SD'd at like a really low percent. And he basically had the set. It was it was um so it was a big throw. But what he was doing all set was um actually it's similar to the thing I was just mentioned with like Luigi's down B and uh Yoshi's side B, where it turns out Sheik's chain actually stalls you for like a long amount of time like almost a full not a full second but it feels like a full second and he would use it like he'd be coming he'd be coming down you know everyone says she has trouble landing right? oh it's one of that's her biggest right I, weaknesses. I think i've seen this i forgot about yeah that. and the thing about chain is it's pretty laggy but only if you're already pretty low to the ground because what he would do is he would he would be pretty high up and he would and keep he'd, it low right right he would use the chain which would prevent s fat from going up to like up air or something and then um as he's kind of pulling the chain back to him, it turns out there's actually kind of a lingering hitbox that sort yeah. of protects you. And the little stall that it does, you can see him do it do it in the set several times. Dude, I forgot and it that. worked like almost every time, at least for most of the set. Um, so that's, <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe J Moot can be the one uh, to uh, the yeah, gears I'll, I'll set, I'll be set try later. It. I can't you can wait. Yeah, try it. I'll send you the set because, like, you can like you can just be you can be reactive with it too. Like, if if they're yeah. like, "Oh, you're chaining this way," I'm gonna go out and behind you, but you can just whip it back, you know? Yeah, yeah, also, yeah, yeah. Um, it's weird. It's weird to say it. Like, it's kind of hard to visualize. But if you see this, if you watch the set, you'll you'll see what I mean. And I thought yeah. it was really creative. Uh, it is. I have to call it the code because um, he. I, I've never seen anyone else do it, but he yeah, did it like ten to. times. You have to. Yeah. Yeah, at that point. So that's my answer. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, show this to Jay Mick later. Maybe we get some representation for this movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for some reason, I'm always like, every time I watch uh, SFAT play a Japanese Sheik, I always, I always see something new. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last one. Shouts of Flash. Oh that's man, right. that's right. That's, that's Flash. That's yeah. what I was saying. Flash or something. Yeah. 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 Um, Jay Mook, did you have a, what? What were your answers to this question? Do you have anything you were thinking of? Uh, I have a lot moves. that come to mind. Uh, non chic yeah. one, but I guess for chic, it would be um, second hit up tilt for sure. I think, oh, first of all, her up, tilt, her up tilt is broken. A um, yeah, couple crazy. things about up tilt it's obviously it's amazing on block. It's like plus two or something. Um, it actually goes behind her. So you can literally like be like outside of shield grab range and like stand like with your back turned. And you can do like second up tilt. You can turn around jab, and they can't even like buff a lot like out of it. Like, oh wow! It just you can like yeah, you can do like up tilt jab is like a true link. Like they can't like they could like buffer spot dodge maybe, but it's like it's just like a true link. Um, it combo it, it combos really well. It's kind of like a niche move because it's like well if you can like if you're timing a second up tilt, you can probably like you know do easier links or conversions. But I've gotten like I've like tried to cover a side B with with up till and then the the second it covers the short end, you know there's a lot of like mm. little niche situations where that does like has like won me games you know and I, overall i think it's yeah it's probably like one of Sheik's best moves like definitely one of Sheik's best grounded moves i'd say she's got a lot of good rounded moves i know first chain now up till it's like you know, it doesn't <laughs> stop you know down b you know I use that at Genesis too. <laughs> That's right. And then the Zelda Four Till. Yeah. Zelda, I was actually gonna say Zelda Four Till is is amazing. <laughs> that one is very satisfying. It has the same, it has the same uh, like DI trap trajectory as like Marth up tilt in a way, or if you DI away, it, it just pops you straight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like Marth dash tag kinda. Yeah. Like yeah. does that same little swipe, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah There's that's, uh, uh, that's my answer. Yeah. Um Man, there's definitely some good. Uh, there's definitely some good answers here, PP. I feel like the one one move that you put the world on was Falco forward air. Forward air, yeah. When I, mean, I think when I think PP Falco, I think of you just doing up throw on a Sheik or Marth, and just somehow getting five hits of forward air does yes. forty damage. I'm like, <laughs> Dude, what? Why is that a thing? Before people SDI the lasers on up throw. I learned that starting at 10% and going a little bit longer, if you up through Marth, it just comboed into flop forward air, and, and no one knew what was going on. <laughs> just I, just got, I just got so much damage. It was awesome. And now, you know, you can actually still do it depending on how they DI, but you got to, like, double jump, and you got to read their SDI, and it's like, all, it's like 14 kinds of funky now. But, yeah, you can do it, and occasionally versus Sheik, it's something, too. So it's kind of, it's a fun move still, but it's, you know, multi hits and SDI don't play nice these days, so you got to be yeah. careful. 
Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a fun move. It's still your thing, though. Like, no one I play with, like, my friends always joke, we do, like, I'll throw a full-off full, off, full, full pair, and then we're just like, PPMD. Like, we just do, <laughs> like, we do the, 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 the Smash Caster voice. It's like, it, it's you. Like, a Green Falco doing that, it's like, how can we that's not cool. think of, you know, because that's where we first saw it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. Um, in the meanwhile, by the way, I, I actually am going to link Jane with the... Oh, I, have, yes, I, I actually found the set and I found the moment. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, if anyone anyone following along uh, on on YouTube or or you know if you're if you're not literally listening live or if you are listening live, uh, if you go to SVAD versus Konatori Evo 2018, go to about three minutes and uh, where is it? Three minutes and uh, fifteen <laughs> like seconds. You'll see exactly what I mean. Yeah, you'll see exactly what I mean. Yeah, I looked I up this very as you were describing it. It's, it's insane nice. seeing this. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's quite it's quite crazy. Anyway, well, we're gonna um, we're gonna leave the technology with Jay Mook, and right. uh, we're gonna see what he does with the masterful yeah. man he is. In the meantime, I think we've covered the question pretty well, Horsey. Thank you so much That's for right. calling in. Yeah, yeah no, awesome. really cool question. Honestly, I, yeah, yeah. yeah Any thanks, shout outs for Any. Yeah, I've got a couple. Um, I guess first off, shout out to my inspirations for this question. So for one, the oh. uh, the FGC translated YouTube channel. I've been watching a bunch of like oh, Dio sure. and, and Nemo oh. clips about uh you know awesome all, this, all this new Street Fighter oh. Five stuff. Yeah, it's a dope channel. Definitely check it out if you want to see some Street Fighter. Um, uh-huh. as well as Amsa because you know as as a Yoshi player, he's given me some oh, some yeah. good food for for inspiration on mm-hmm. you know my my weeklies this next little bit. <laughs> You always, okay. you, always, you, always, you always eat good after watching Amsa. Oh, Definitely. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> it's been a dry couple of years, so we're we're looking we're looking good. Um, okay. My second one is uh, shout out Toph for correctly guessing my main based on what I look like a Ooh, couple weeks ago. Oh, <laughs> that was dope. Amazing. I was I'm actually in the thumbnail of the video. <laughs> Ooh, perfect. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, it's it's you know hype stuff. Good times. Uh, and then shout out to San Antonio Melee. I, uh, everybody, I missed a lot of people. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I, I'm I'm one of like what was it like six or seven or something like that? It's you know it was exciting, mm-hmm. it's a, mm-hmm. it's a hype moment. Uh, yeah, no, San Antonio Melee's dope. I uh, I miss everybody. Our our locals have gone online for the past little bit, so mm. it's been uh, it's been hype. I guess Texas Melee in general too. Austin's got a great scene, so good. Mm. To, you know, hope to hope to see everybody soon at the at the next one. Yeah, awesome. that is really cool. Well, well, hey, thank you so much, Horsey, for for calling in. Hope you have a good rest of your day out there in Texas. Oh, yeah. Likewise. See y'all later. See ya. Yep. All right. A couple good questions down. We got at least one more to go. Let's bring in our next caller. Dow Dog, what's up? Where are you calling in from? And what's your question for us today? Hey, how's it going, guys? Um, I'm calling from SoCal Garden Grove, to be specific. Very nice. Um, Yes. Um, My question is... uh, so competitive melee, as we all know, has had a very long uh, history, and it's come a long way since its humble beginnings. Um, I'd say now more than ever, um, there's been more eyes, more money, and most importantly, uh-huh. more skilled players associated with the game um, than ever before. Um, however, there's one thing that just doesn't seem to add up in my mind, and that's the numbers. And when I mean numbers, I mean money. Um, yeah. So even with the increased cash flow and popularity that Melee sees today, why does sustainability mm-hmm. for the top 10 players and let alone like top 100 players seem like such a distant dream? Um, so essentially my question is, you know, what are the next steps that we as a community can take to kind of change the environment to see a better future for the scene as a whole? Um, and, you know, long story short, to get everybody paid that well in their right, you know, deserves it. Yeah. Um, instead of just seeing, and even as you can see, obviously, um, you know, still top 10 players, um, it's difficult for them to really take Melee 100% seriously just because of financial, you know, restraints and difficulties. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, what's your guys' thoughts on that? Um, you know, I think a lot certainly has changed, right? Because, like, first of all, streaming and YouTube and stuff like that and are sponsors. very nascent. Um, yeah, yeah. And like, uh, right. I mean, even, even just being on a pro team in general, right? Like, I mean, I guess was club mega, was that the first like esports team pickup PP? I, yeah, I believe and it. You was. were kind of soon after. 
Yeah, I, I yeah. think it was. I think it was Mango, and then I. Yeah, and I think Curse with Hbox might have been before me. Oh but yeah, I think Curse was. I don't know how big Curse actually was. You have to forgive my uh, knowledge of that. Right. But then I was with EG, and so those would have been some of the big pickups. I think Liquid actually got some people, maybe even before C9 got Mango, but they got a lot of people from the uh, first documentary. Um, mm. And so that was that was its whole thing there. Right. Right. Um, I, I think the best, uh, the best exam, I mean, this is uh, certainly a hot topic on Twitter these days. Um, and yeah. I don't want to go super into it cause obviously there's a lot to say. Yeah. Um, I strongly encourage you and anyone curious about this topic to, to check out like Aiden had a lot to say and I think he might've put up like a video or something talking about this problem. And I think the, uh, the, the, the challenge right now is we actually do have a lot of eyes on the game. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, it's really funny. I noticed even at Pound, like I was like, dude, like for some reason, Pound had more viewers for Melee than Ultimate, like all weekend. Um, I think Pound was kind of crazy broke, that, uh, I think Pound broke Genesis numbers barely. That's crazy. I guess pe I think people were so hyped on Genesis that they were like, oh, gotta watch more Melee. I'm uh, just surprised. So, or, or even without JMook, they did it. I, I said that could be done. They have to have JMook. Mm -hmm. They were probably watching because they were hoping Jamie would show up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's coming from the rafters yeah. after grand finals for the rematch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was busy, but, um, making, yeah. Uh, I was busy making lattes and macchiatos. Sorry. Oh my goodness! I saw that That's picture awesome. of you. Yes. Hey, is this the Genesis top eight finalist? And you're just sitting behind a counter. Yeah. yeah. That's the that's the Starbucks version of a uh, Walgreens drink, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 That is cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll kind of chip in on this because I, to be honest, I don't really engage much in in these kind of discussions. But personally, I'm not well I'm not well informed enough to like even have an opinion on it. I just kind of see like I see so many people in this community that not even like top players, just people that don't get paid at all, and they spend their yeah. they spend hours and yeah. hours of their free time like all this selfless work the tos the yes. all these organizers people the volunteers yes. the pool captains yes. all these people like if if in a perfect world all of them should be getting paid like in yes. full for sure and right, i think that right, it, right. it would be it would be healthy for that and the answer like i wish there was a better answer and i feel like 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 you said Tof, like we have the viewership numbers like we get people right. watching it's a matter of like how are we gonna turn that viewership into money like i know someone brought up either you or someone else brought up maturino um i've had mm -hmm. some experience with maturino it, it, it sometimes it helps sometimes it doesn't but it's very like marginal in there like in its effect but yeah personally i i really don't know like how we can like make this better uh, there's no like there's no sound it's like well if we increase this or decrease that you know it's it's, it's just a numbers game at that point when it's i think that there's other things that we could work on you know like a structural yeah i think it's a i think if you just because that's one of the big the big uh suggestions that's been going around twitter lately is like oh what if well what if we double the pro uh sorry ent entry fee mm -hmm. which you know gets us arguably gets us somewhere um yeah, yeah. but the real the real thing is like you know we've got fifty thousand viewers how do we engage them and how do we actually mm -hmm. like you know they use the word it's kind of like a marketing word like which is basically like you got yeah. all these people but you haven't actually like if even if they want to support they probably don't even know how, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think the one thing is, yeah, Matrino's one idea. And I know, and it's funny, because I actually think Pound actually had a Matrino set up, but I don't think they were super proactive in, oh, in plugging it. And it, see, you didn't know, right? It's, no. it's all about, I think, I think for a lot of people, like the, the, the other example I brought up was, you know, Twitch used to have this system. Might, it might still, which is called Watch Ads for Bits, where as a viewer, you can click a button to willingly watch an ad. And if you sit through it, a certain amount of money in the form of bits basically goes directly to the streamer. And I've heard stories of people like, like zoomers will literally just match this button and they'll just watch ads mm -hmm. for two hours because they love whatever Minecraft streamer. Right. And they yeah. just want to support them. They're like, well, no, I, dude, you know, people hate watching ads, but if they know watching the ad is going to directly support somebody, they don't go out of their way to do it. They're like, please give me more ads. I love ads. I just want to, because it's a thing, right? And so, yeah. uh, I don't think the average viewer for Melee even knows how they can um, they can support their favorite player right now. Sort of yeah. like, yeah, if they stream, then but there's so much effort and mindshare go that goes from you know, say this, say somebody watches you. Well, maybe you're not the best sim because you aren't actively streaming right now. Let's say somebody watches, let's say like I don't know, even Mango or let's say None, right? None's probably a good example here. They watch None play. 
at Genesis, are they realistically going to think to themselves, the average person, are they realistically going to be like, boy, I sure want to see this guy succeed. Like, oh, I better go Google and find his Twitch stream and then find the next day that he's streaming so right. I can go in. And, you know, it's, there's just so many steps there. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I think there's, I think that uh, the, the big question right now is, is uh, yeah, turning, turning those eyeballs and, uh, that, that, that are watching competitive melee and, and basically saying, like, all right, well, how do we, like, engage these people? Because a lot of them, like, they're down. Like, people are actually down. People mm-hmm. want to support their favorite players, but they just kind of don't know how. Yeah. Um, I actually do want to try to do more with Matrino. I experimented with it on King of the Cube one time, and it was actually, like, a pretty... It was pretty good. Like, uh, it was, like, actually, surprisingly, like, people were really, really on top of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I definitely do want to do more there. Um, but also just, like, I think from the other side of things, it's just... Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the obviously, I don't think the answer is necessarily there today. Um, but there are, uh, I mean, that's the question we should be asking ourselves is like, you know, whether it's in the form of merch, whether it's in the form of like, kind of, uh, yeah, better ways to direct people from a tournament broadcast to like, you know, if, if I, I don't know how to do it, but if there was like some way to like, even, um, direct, yeah, like imagine, I don't know, on the Genesis top eight stream, it literally says like, oh, this so-and-so is playing and it says on the broadcast or something somewhere it's like you know this is this is their twitch channel if you want to go support them or something. Yeah. yeah i don't know um some some way to actually direct people where they might want to go mm-hmm. uh and then i guess the other side of it is just sponsors like you know you talk about why is there a money problem in melee or whatever i mean i think the big thing is like as a sponsor like as a literal like brand or whatever it's so like papa john's is the the, mm-hmm. the, the the most recent example so papa john's kind of taking a risk right in the sense that, like if nintendo comes around and says hey like you know, uh, actually, you know, we, you know, we don't approve of this because of, you know, uh, we, we, we want to do something with pizza or something instead or something, whatever. Like they can shut it all down and they can basically pull the rug out under the sponsor that got involved. Or if they just say, you know, this doesn't fit with our image, um, of what we think is, uh, works for our IP or whatever, they can, they can basically shut it down. So for a sponsor, it's like risky. They're incurring some amount of risk, whereas if they were to to to, to work with like a uh, Riot Games or something, they know that it's gonna that nothing's gonna happen. They know that it's gonna be the deal is gonna be solid till the end. They, they, like they, no one can swoop in and, and 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 say, oh, actually, you know, it turns out we own this game and we don't want you to to invest this money, so we have to actually shut this deal down. So I think for for that, it's just. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Shout outs to to Beyond the Summit for making the deal happen because uh, you know that's definitely a lot of money that's being put into the the scene because of that right now. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just um, it's going to take. I mean, I do I do think it also helps in the sense that uh, the more sponsorship deals like that happen, maybe the more that other brands are going to want to get engaged. Mm-hmm. But um, we'll we'll see we'll see what happens. I suppose. Yeah, I'm not a biz dev guy obviously, but that's just what I observe. Yeah. yeah. It's hard for us. I mean, like, there will be a certain point where, like, once once we have enough partnerships like that, then we can start, like, looking more towards, like, top 100 player support, because... Right, right, right. Like, just, further down. Just, like I said, there's just so many people that, does, that de- deserve to be to pay for the hard work that they, that they do, and it's mm-hmm. not really, um, there's not, like, a one truth, one like one path to like there's no like mm-hmm. there's no like slippy for like contributing to you know the financial stability of these players you know there's no right, like right, there's, right. No, there's no one button to press there's a combination of ways there's like you said there's merch there's subs there's you know direct donations there's patreon there's all these like there's all these like minute little things that do help the individual but it doesn't help the community as a whole right I know. absolutely i don't know pp you have any thoughts on this yeah, I mean, one of the big things I wanted to say, you know, was Nintendo is <laughs> holding us down, man, uh, and yeah. it's tough. But um, it, and I think that's why we don't have a lot of sponsors coming in. But the question is, what can the Smash community do? You, average viewer, if you hear that Papa John's gets into melee and sponsors tournaments, d- support it. <laughs> don't be mad. Mm-hmm. Everyone's getting mad about it. We don't have any money. I understand it's it's not I'm not saying it's a perfect company or anything, but 
this is this is what we got to do. These are the choices we got to make. And so let's do what we can to support our community and support our players. Um, so that's if you want to know something that the everyday person can do, be happy we're going to get some money. And that way more sponsors can see that and maybe they'll want to jump in so they don't get screamed at. Yeah, this was actually something that got brought up on. Um, God, I, I forget who was. I think Slime was talking about this at one of the SELs or something, but he was basically making the point that like, you know, what we do have in, as, in the Smash community, we don't have a lot. But what we do have is uh, we're all on Twitter too much. And so <laughs> yeah. what, you could do, what you could do is you could go to a tweet that's um, that, like, say there's some tweet on BTS Smash. And it's like, yo, the, the sp- p- title, title partner for this event is such and such company. And they make pizza or whatever. And if you go to that tweet and you, like, comment on it and like it and stuff, you can imagine. Okay, here's the thing. Most brand Twitters are not that lit, right? Like most of the time when there's a company that sponsors something, people don't really engage with it, right? Because people don't really care about sponsored tweets and stuff like that, right? I mean, you, you can kind of just intuitively tell. Um, and so if there's some social media guy that works for, let's say, Papa John's, and most of the time when they're like, hey, we got the whatever, ex- epic whatever deal for such and such amount. And like, you know, those tweets are getting 10 likes or whatever. And then you imagine BTS Smash comes out, and they're like, uh, hey, uh, we're partnering with Papa John's, ep- uh, Epic Stuff Crust, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, like, there's 50 Smashers that are all like, yo, this is my, I love pizza, fuck, love Papa John's sausage, or what, whatever, right? Yeah. You know, that social media guy is going to be like, damn, this Smash community, like, they really, um, they're really into this. Like, they're really, they're really engaging with, you know, and then they go to their boss, they're like, hey, I, you know, this, 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 this program is, uh, it's going really well. Uh, you know, like, these guys are really. They have the day. They really like this pizza. Yeah, they're really like into this. Um, and then you know the 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 company you know who somewhat eventually that goes to some higher up who goes, oh okay, well I guess this these Smash guys uh, we should keep working with them and keep giving them money because it seems like they um, they really like our stuff. Uh, and and so that actually is something that you know like the average Smasher can just do because like you know it just doesn't. Um, you may think you're just one person, but on the flip side, like zero engagement on a sponsor tweet versus like even 10 people replying or whatever, like that's pretty big, right? I think for if you're um, if you're some social media guy that works at some company. So I, I think that is totally something the average person can can just do. Uh, yeah. You know, if, if you're out there and you're wondering, how do I support the smash scene? I actually think that does help a lot. Um, I'm, I'm not even in the or I'll be honest, I'm not even the biggest fan of uh father jonathan's but if i hear they're sponsoring a, <laughs> a tournament you know I'll, I'll i'll like i'll like it you know i'll, I'll like it i'll eat it yeah i, think, I mean also, you're from I the mean, east coast so you're from yeah. new york so i i i get it i've had new york pizza <laughs> i get it i wouldn't that's be a fan fair. of <laughs> that's fair i mean I, honestly like we also need to go beyond twitter too because i i have people yeah, that's like yeah. you know because i feel 100%. like tw- twitter is like twitter is is the new smash boards you know it's like oh. you know it used to be yeah. Facebook, Facebook actually used to be the yeah. new Smash yeah. yeah. and then uh, yeah. to Twitter. Um and then, you know, here we are. And I feel like I don't we we could we obviously the, the retweets, all that could can help, but you know, hmm. there's there's a lot there's a lot less stuff on Google Chrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. A lot of stuff we can um, be looking at. And I mean there are more solutions uh that are being discussed, but yeah, like Toast said, I don't I don't want to. We we can't take all day on the question, but it's it's an important one. It's a very good one. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a topical one, and it's one that Jay Mook is about to become intimately familiar with. So you know, huh. he can put that out into Twitter as he learns more about that, and we can kind of see what his experience likes. I'm very curious about it, but in the meantime, I think uh, I'd I'd like to see if we can move on a little bit and, and make sure we get have enough time for our last caller here. So thank you so much, Dow Dog, for calling okay. in. You got any shout outs for us today? Sure. Yeah. Obviously, uh, shout out to you guys, obviously, for letting me come on and uh, ask a question. Uh, shout out to J Mook, obviously, for just being sick. Yes. <laughs> just uh, letting us watch, you know, his his performance recently at Genesis. And uh, shout out to you, PP, because you're a legend, and Toph, Thanks. you're a legend as well. Honestly, all of you guys are legends. So um, appreciate you know, that. I appreciate the time, and obviously, yeah, whatever we can do to better the Smash community, you know, I think that everyone should join together and. Mm-hmm. Try to do their part, whether it's just one tweet or you know, you know, changing, you know, or making their TL think about something that 
they mm-hmm. previously didn't about how right. pools are structured and how payouts work or something, mm-hmm. you know, just all those little things, you know, at the end of the day, they do make a difference. So obviously, uh, thanks to you guys. And then shout out to the person that I came up with this question, really, which, who is Marco? Now, you guys may know his brother. His name is Caesar. He was like, in 2018, he was PR mm-hmm. ranked in SoCal. Okay. He was yeah. like 20, mm-hmm. 20, 20 mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's my good friend and he's the guy that kind of got me into Smash. So oh, I that's awesome. Appreciate him. Cool deal. And um, yeah, let's keep, keep the ball rolling and hopefully a bright future for the community. I hope so. Yeah. Well, thank you Thanks so you much, Dow Dog. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Might have one more. Uh, I think we, yeah. we have time for one more. Let's bring him on. Toasty Fries, bring what's up? Where are you calling in from and what's your question for us today? Hi. Um, Hi, um, I'm calling Hi. from um, Canada, Ontario. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, my Ontario. question is, uh, if you could play any other character than Sheik, who would you main? And how did you go about picking um, Sheik as your main? And bonus question, who do you main in Smash Ultimate? Yeah, Jay, let's go. Ask, you better answer those questions well or you're in All trouble. Right, well, I'll, I'll, start I know, the, I'll start with the bonus, which is <laughs> Link. <laughs> I play Link in Ultimate. Oh, oh dude, Link it Link is such a cool character at all. Dude, I actually you know who I'm a big fan of at all is uh I actually really like Rishi's Link. I think it's pretty cool. Rishi's Link. <laughs> I've never seen Rishi's Shout Link Rishi. in Ultimate. Yeah. Yeah, he does some of the cool bombs. His bombs though. are the more like it's like it's like, imagine like Samus mains when they're like, oh my bombs are so big brain. Link's bombs <laughs> yeah. are like Link's bombs are little like chess pieces. They're they're your uh, rugs. They're, your... <laughs> they're so they're so sick. I love yeah. what they did with I actually wish Link was like that in melee. Anyway, whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, can, his yeah, bombs are yeah, actually so sick. There is mod potential for there, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um let's see, who would I main before so loaded a question. I mean I didn't start with Sheik. Obviously, it was like Falco and Marth. I did like those two mm. on and off. Interesting. Um, wow. Then, and you uh, said you played Falcon and PM. Falcon and PM. Bit. Like Falcon, Marth, Lucas, Young Link, like anyone at that point. I mean, anyone anyone that could teach me how to L cancel is like, mm. you know, helpful. Um, yeah. I guess I guess if if I could main someone, it would probably be probably Fox. I think Fox would be like if if there were was a character I'd be like yeah I could probably like push I could probably like get a lot out of this character like you know solo mm-hmm. maining Fox um would be my next best step but um early on like Falco Marth it wasn't really cut and I picked Sheik and I was like I don't know I think Sheik like favors a lot of things that I like about like Smash which is um frustrating people <laughs> what is your what is the most okay so let's see what what encapsulates that the most for you what 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 about chic do you think is most frustrating to people is it just being down thrown over and over if you're a spacey like what do you think it is about chic that most exemplifies that maybe there's not one thing but maybe you're just like ah yeah got him (laughs) or something it's just the the common it's, it's just like yeah, obviously, like punish game. It's her her needles. Also, like ninjas are dope. Like I, I like nin- ninjas it's as a so as dope. a concept, and the fact that you can pl- like like Sheik like like imagine if Sheik like like yeah she's a ninja, but like she doesn't play at all like a ninja. Like mm-hmm. you can still play like you can be play very evasive. You still hit hard. You still are very like very sneaky. You can mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. um, Sheik has a lot more expression than most people realize. Um, yeah, at least the, me me personally. Obviously, well, you like, proved that. Yeah. I don't think yeah. anyone can really disagree with you there. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, she, she gets sick. Um, I also grew up playing my, like, so Smash was, like, I grew up playing my my older brother and his friends, and so I was, like, the little brother of the group, and I'd always, like, i just look for ways to try and annoy them or make them mad. So, like, I feel like that kind of, like, seeped into the way I play now, where just, like, like if I know that they get upset, like, when I... When I when you this, walk like, at them? I, when you walk at them, and then I'll cross the whole stage, and then you have yeah, to... Yeah, yeah. Like walking which is which which you get fined for that, by the way. <laughs> you get fined for that, that's right. You can't do that. You, can't you gotta be that. careful. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. it's ballsy I mean, to do that on the big stage, Jamie. I mean, you should have seen my wallet. I, I, like, I had to, like, pay some only after that. <laughs> you know, I had to drop some some twenties. You know, it's, I think it's 160 in San Jose for that. I mean, oh no, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. They take that real seriously out here. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Sheik as a character, I I like the way she plays. I love, I like her pace, especially in tournament because mm. like her, her pace in tournament is very like 
reasonable for you know for human error. I feel yeah. like there's she's I'd like say. she's like the perfect sweet spot. So she's not like she doesn't like you can, I mean, obviously obviously you can play really fast with her, but she's like the just she has the right amount of buttons where you can still play and and play at a good pace without being like well like I I accidentally pressed this button instead, so now I'm I'm getting like zero death because of it, you know. Yeah. Uh huh. And also, she uh, lives long too. That's true. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, circling back to your your Fox answer to besides Sheik, I don't think I fully understood why you said you would play Fox beside Sheik. Is it just because Fox is real good, or, or and Zane was Zane was saying on Radio Melee, you know, last week he was saying that uh, you know he thought your Fox was quite good. He did say, uh, yeah, I was. There. Which I've, I've definitely played yeah. more Fox, or like if there's a character that I've played more, I probably more played more Fox than Sheik on unranked. Honestly, you know, I uh-huh. play a. I play a lot of Fox, so Do that's why I say. Do you Smurf on unranked? Is the Fox on on the Smurf? I I, I used to Smurf, yeah. You used wow. to. You used ruined, to. You were out there you ruining people's to. days, Jay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh man. Back then, also wow. I mean I mean Zelda. That used to be my Smurf. Actually, I probably shouldn't have said that. Now it's that's how. Well, you can always change the name. Oh, oh that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean Zelda colon three. You know, it's oh very nice. How I do it. <laughs> Oh, hey, that's wonderful, man. Um, do you have anything you wanted to follow up with on that toasty fries? I think we got pretty good answers out of him. Um, no, but I just like to shout out my cousin Andrew, um, because mm-hmm. he got me into Smash. Like he forced <laughs> me to watch both of the documentaries, nice. and now I'm kind of obsessed with it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Also, shout out to my friend Kyle, who's watching the stream right now. So, hi, Kyle. Awesome. <laughs> You guys Good have for you. It's it's hard. Day. It's hard to force um when someone's like, "Hey, watch the doc," and you see it's like six hours. And you're like, "Like, okay." No, it was I, really I good that. though. Yeah, it was, it was. Really it's good sad. that you enjoyed it. Yeah, it's awesome. Glad to have you in the community. Yeah, thank you. Well, hey, thank you so much for calling in, and I think you got your shout outs done. But if there's any others, you can go ahead and run it now. Oh, shout out to myself. Um, Heck yeah. Yeah, here's my Discord Toasty Fries. The number is eight zero six four. So yeah. <laughs> Let's make friends. All right. I have it's a new one. All right. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for calling in, Toasty Fries. Hope you have a good rest thank of your you. day. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Guys. Take care. All right. You now, know, it's it's okay. funny. I just as a random aside here, I pride myself for some reason on being able to identify very subtle Canadian accents, mm. and I was able when when. Toasty fries immediately came on. I was like, "Oh, they, they might be from Canada," and I was right. <laughs> oh, clutch! Why right, good stuff, though. Yeah, the yeah, identifier. Yeah. That's right. That's me. <laughs> That's me. It's a. It's like a. It's like a. You know, America's Got Talent or Canada's Got Talent. I don't know. It's one of those. Uh-huh. Like yeah. I could go out there. You give me like thirty, like a mix of Americans and Canadians, and I think I'd be able to. Like, Dude. Yeah, right. be like, be like, like, oh, next up Everything's on Canadians good, right? got accents, and it's just like you in front of like, twenty <laughs> Canadians, and be like, okay, on like Ontario, Montreal, Quebec, <laughs> yeah, 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 Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Um, well, Jay Mook, we're we're about done with you here. We've got to talk about the community voice in a second, so start thinking huh? about that. But right before we ask you for it, I there's a question that I th- there's a fact about you that I think is so insane that I really don't want this episode to go by without mentioning it, because I want mm. you to respond to it. You said that Genesis is your third major. And I want you to nod. It is your third, right? Let me do the math. Yeah. <laughs> it is his third major. Your second major was Smash World Tour last year. Yes? Right? Yes. Yep. Okay, now here's uh, the thing. Okay, here's... false. Oh. Uh... Yeah. Oh, it's coming, it's coming out. It might be four. It might oh, be four. I can't believe it. Yeah. Well, OK, <laughs> clear clue me in on what the discrepancy is. But uh, you had World Tour last year, December. Mm-hmm. You had Genesis in April of this year. And then I heard in an interview you did. You said your first major was Super Smash Con 2017, which means you went a lot of years without a major. Yes. And that is insane. Wow. I want to know what the heck you were doing that whole time. And I also now want to know what the fourth major was. Where is that? The fourth one was prior to that. Um, it was, well, it was earlier. <laughs> yeah, well, I said, I said that, like the last, the last major I went to like, at, like before World Tour was Smash Con 2017. Holy with that, cow. With, with that five year. Yeah, before that was Evo 2016. I was, I was there for that. And that was, I was quite a time. Obviously, I was did not place anywhere near 
Um, yeah, right. But yeah, the, get... yeah, Evo 2016 was my first like super major that I went to. That's cool, man. So, so what happened between SmashCon 2017 and Smash World Tour in December of 2021? What what was going on? Were you just busy? Uh, were you know you had stuff going on? A lot of a lot of dates. I mean, what was happening, man? I mean, let's see. 2017. It was. God, I was still in high school by then. Yeah, so I was I was about to go into senior year of high school. Um, college started. My local scene was actually like fairly decent at the time up mm-hmm. right right around like right up until like the end of 2019 where um i mean we must have had like we had like 70 like 80 people at like one of our oh, like first wow. first like locals and these were people oh, wow. that didn't even like play smash they just wanted to come here like mm. oh i want to enter this i heard like you guys have wow. run great events um so the scene was very active for a little bit up until like mm-hmm. honestly when ultimate came out because they all this melee for ultimate because i kept winning i kept winning all their events and you're just like this is, <laughs> this is this is dumb like they there's another game that they're playing in the corner let's do that instead mm. um i mean i don't i don't hate them at all for that because they you know it was that was essentially my training grounds i mean i was going there i mean there were like it. a lot of other strong players there that were still pushing you for my yeah is it true or not true yeah exactly i mean in my local scene around upstate new york i mean i mean the when I couldn't get to travel, like these like small upstate like regional slash locals, like those are my evos essentially. Those are my super majors until yeah. I actually got to go. So like like the you know the mentality that I have going to like super majors, it started when I started going to these update upstate events when I was still like in school or in college and while also working a job and going to these events on the weekends, still having the same like you know mentality of you know like how can I make the how can I make the most of something like in when it matters most. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. And I, you know, I guess that that just filled the drive for you, for again, for in that massive five, uh, four yeah. or five year gap. That's crazy, man. Well, look, I don't want to. I know you're you're busy, man. You probably got deals to sign and everything else, so we're not going to keep you. But we are going to ask you for one more thing here on the show, and that is mm-hmm. the community voice. Community Your question voice. Okay. for the YouTube audience. It can be any question uh-huh. you want um ever, however serious or funny or both you want to do but it is it has got to be your question and if we need to stall for time or ask you questions about it we are perfectly down to do that well i'm thinking um okay i got one um mm. have you two seen both the uk and uh american version of the office mm. I might have seen some excerpts of the UK one, but I I really couldn't okay. tell you anything about it. Well, my I guess my question would be if um, both casts of The Office were to be in a crew battle against each other, <laughs> who would wow. who would win? And also, bonus question for the community: What uh-huh. would each what would each character main? Oh, each yeah. Wow. Okay. Who would they? Wow. Main? This is going to be hard for us to unpack on the next episode. I can't, I can't wait. <laughs> you, this is this is purely for J. Book. He is going to read yeah. every comment, so make sure you put some thought into this one. <laughs> That's right. I wanna, That's well, right. I want to see like I want to see like a thick description. I want to yeah. see some. I want to <laughs> see some lore about like well, this person in season two, episode eight, like said this, so he's probably a Falcon. Man, yes. You know? yes. Right. Make right. sure you guys go out, use the Headspace app, get yourself centered, and then write write some write three or yeah. four paragraphs. This is your homework. Mm-hmm. Well, we had some good creative writing last week, so yeah. you know mm-hmm. the expectation. The bar has been raised ever ever since the uh, the mustache story by James. <laughs> yeah. Don't we talk me. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't quest. Don't quest me. Mm. All right. Well, hey, thank yeah. you so much, uh, Jamie, for coming yeah, on today. Man. Thank we you. Really thank you guys it. so much. Absolutely. Been, yeah, been really time. excited to see more of you in the in the future. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone's excited. I think everyone's excited for your stream. For the full time mm-hmm. JMOOC Melee Experience Extravaganza. Mm-hmm. So good luck with that. Thank you. Um, and yeah, so maybe we'll see you back on here sometime soon if you're interested. But for sure. Hey, regardless, thank you so much, Toe, for holding it down bright and early there in Singapore. Of course. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> get some more sleep if you're going to be doing that, man. I'm so. I'm so awake after talking to Jamie. Yeah, no, yeah. the so Jamie like, difference, yeah. man. Well, hey, yeah. the Jamie difference. Yeah, do you still right. have the you know the lucky Singapore shirt that you showed me? Are they wearing? Oh it? man, yeah. Uh, it's around. It's around. I don't think I brought it with me, but no? uh, yeah, well, it's, it's around. Not, it's not looking anymore. 
<laughs> I, I didn't. Well, I didn't need luck out here, you know. But yeah, it's, oh, that's it's true. just it's yeah. just a family trip. But uh, maybe I'll work to my next tournament. For sure. Hey, wonderful. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you so much, Toph. Thank you so much, Jay Mook. And thank you yeah. guys out there, the callers and the viewers and listeners. We'll see you guys next time. This is Radio. That's Man. right. Signing out.